Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Brian the Floridian. It is Sunday, February 7th, day of Super Bowl 55, and today is a bittersweet shave. I'm going to be doing a shave today in honor of my father-in-law, Paul, who just recently passed away, and we had a funeral yesterday for him, but today is also Super Bowl Sunday, so I'm going to be com combining the shave into a Super Bowl Sunday shave and a tribute shave to Paul. And one of the things that he loved was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And as you can see, I'm wearing the shirt today again. Uh, seize the day. So today is Super Bowl 55, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'll be really, really pulling hard for my hometown Bucks to win this game. And this will be a, the second Super Bowl. Hopefully they would win. And the last one they won was back in 2002, which was 37. So anyway, Super Bowl 37. And what's cool is I have the hat from that year when they won the Super Bowl back in 2002 and this is a Super Bowl hat uh, official hat that they wore on the field after they won the title back in 2002 which is pretty cool and I saw that hat I just pulled it out for the shave and I just pulled it out just to wear today just as in honor of the Bucks and also in honor of my father-in-law who actually has I want to say he has his hat somewhere in his collection but anyway my father-in-law, his name is Paul, and I'm still kind of grieving, so I'll try to get to the shave, and it's definitely bittersweet. Today would have been a day that he would have loved to watch the Bucks. He was a huge Bucks fan. He also was a, a Florida Gator fan, and also a Tampa Bay Rays fan, so he loves sports, and great father-in-law. I couldn't ask for a better father-in-law to have. I mean, he was more like a father to me, in a way. So anyway, guys, for this shave, and this, this shave is actually a few things of, of sentimental value. Actually, some, some products that, that I would be, I'm going to be using that pertain to him, to Paul. And the first thing I'm going to be picking up, actually the razor I'll be using, is my Gem Micromatic Razor. And this is the clog proof, the clog proof version. And these were made... Somewhere between 1937, or I'm sorry, 1934 to, to 1947, and this is a single edge razor. And what makes this significant is uh, one of the times I was with my father in law, Paul, we went to an antique shop and he saw this. We both saw it and he said, Hey, you know, there's a, there's a vintage razor. Let's, let's, you know, let's pick it up. And this is one of, one of the razors I picked up that day. So this really, really means a lot to me because actually the only razor I picked up with him and he remembered this razor growing up. So definitely a sentimental razor you used to shave. And the soap I'll be using is a soap which I gifted him a couple years ago. Uh, I want to say maybe, maybe even a year ago during Christmas. And it is based off his favorite cologne, uh, Ralph Lauren Polo Green. So this is called Sterling green so this is the actual soap that i gifted him my mother-in-law actually gave it back to me and said just use it for the shave you know he would be honored for the shave but um as you can tell he used a lot he used a lot of it for you know for for only doing he he had a beard so he had like a a mustache and a beard so he would only shave you know do a touch-up shave right here underneath his neck so he did use a lot for that and he loves Sterling. I actually gifted him a Mountain Man by Sterling about three, three or four years ago, and he almost finished that container, the full size one. This is like the uh, three ounce size, and I gifted him a five ounce size, and he almost finished that. So I know he loved that scent, and he loves Sterling, and he loved this scent too, also. So this is the this is the soap I'll be using, and the brush is definitely a special brush. Back back in. Uh, I wasn't I want to say 2015 or maybe 14 is when these brushes were popular the L um, Aquitaine brushes by Plasoft by Plasson actually and I gifted him a set of you know the shaving cream the shaving oil I believe and it came with the, with the brush now this is my brush but he had a brush just like this and he loved using it I mean I just recently saw his brush in his bathroom it was pretty beat up so I know he enjoyed using that brush and one of the things that 
I, I'm, I'm very happy is that I got, I got him, I got him to, to try using a brush and some shaving cream and soap. And I know he, I know he did this growing up a little bit, but when I introduced him back to it, to wet shaving, he actually enjoyed it. He forgot how well, how nice it was to use a brush on your face to work, you know, work up a lather. And this is one of his enjoyable things he did, you know, that I reintroduced him to. And it is definitely an honor to be using, doing, using this brush for the shave. And this is my, this is one, it's not really a vintage, I guess you can call it vintage because they don't make this anymore. But this is my uh, Poisson El Aquitaine brush that he used. He also had, had a version of this too in his shaved den. So that's my practice I'll be using for my shave. And I'm about two and a half days worth of growth. So I actually didn't shave, I actually sh haven't shaved since before uh, his funeral, which was yesterday. So this is about, yeah, this is almost like two and a half days of worth of growth on my face. So I'm definitely ready for a shave. So let me go ahead and wash my face, guys. And I got the balloons back here too. I'm feeling mentioned, my wife bought these for today to celebrate the Tampa Bay Buccaneers making the Super Bowl. So you'll see these in the background, <laughs> you know, jumping around behind me. But anyway, definitely pulling for the bucks. I know Paul up there is pulling for the bucks. And the shave is, 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 is for you, Paul. Let me go and wash my face, guys. Get my face fully hydrated, and I'll be right back. So guys, I'm back, got my face fully hydrated. Also gonna be doing a toast to Paul. One of his favorite, one of his favorite drinks he used to always drink when I used to hang out with him and, um, during the summers up in the, uh, he had a, he actually had a cabin in North Carolina, which is like near Waynesville. And at night we would always sip uh, bourbon and Coke. And that's one of his favorite drinks that he used to always enjoy sipping, you know. You know, we, we sit there and talk, old stories, bourbon and Coke. And not the exact bourbon that he would use, but it's pretty close. I got the benchmark. But he enjoyed the uh, Jack Daniels bourbon. And this is for you, Paul. Great drink, great memories. But anyway, I got the, got the brush. Uh, loaded up with the sterling green and not a brush I don't use very often but man this is a good brush but let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and line, line my face up and this soap is pretty pretty strong scented so if you like sterling green or if actually if you like Ralph Lauren polo green the cologne this soap really um, is a good compliment for that for that cologne because it smells exactly spot on just like the uh, polo green got a little bit a little bit dry let me put a little bit more moisture in my face here a little bit of water all right that should be good yeah this soap brings back memories this is my father-in-law this is what he used to always like wearing this polo green. And this really, really, this really brings back a lot of memories of growing up with him around, which, you know, which I've been married for about uh, close to 21, close to 22 years. So I've known Paul since 1995. So really, I did grow up with him around. So that's why he was like a father to me. And this is really a good, really bring back some memories. And as far as I can remember, he used to always wear this scent. And Sterling did a great job. This is spot on. And great, look at that great lather. Lather is pretty awesome. So I can see why he enjoyed using this. Even though he didn't have, he really didn't have much to shave. I, 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 he, when I first met him, he had no mustache. I don't think he had a beard, so he actually did shave, shave a lot more. But recently, he just had a, he had a, a mustache and a, you know, a small beard on his chin and like a, along his uh, jawline. So he would just shave, you know, like I said, the face and the neck. All right, guys, it's a nice lather. So let me go ahead and do that first pass with the uh, Gem Micromatic. The 
claw proof razor, and I have a uh, CVS single edge blade loaded into this razor. I think these are made by Jim, if I'm not mistaken, but great blade. I use this. This is the second. This is the second use of the blade. So let's do that first pass here. So I haven't used this razor in a while, so this is going to be interesting shave here. But I remember how efficient this razor was. Very, very efficient razor. So this razor actually came out after the Star Razor. So if you go back and watch one of my videos about the Star Razor, the Gem Razor actually came after the uh, Kent Brothers, which which were the guys behind Star Razor. Uh, Jerry Reichold was a one of the, one of his coworkers, you know, was one of the guys that worked with uh, the Kent Brothers, and he went out went out on his own and developed the Star. I'm sorry, the Gem Razor, the Single Edge Razor. So this is one of the later versions here. But speaking about Paul, this is one of my favorite memories of us going to the antique shop and picking up this razor and just looking at old stuff, uh, antique things. And this was up in North Carolina. We actually went out. I actually wanted to go check out some antique shops, and he wanted to go with me. And we spent, I think we spent maybe a few hours just reminiscing at talking old stuff, talking about the good old days back in the day. But anyway, great father-in-law, a simple Southern man. He loved boiled peanuts, the gators. And that was one of the two things that were, that I actually had in common with him when we, when we first met. When I first met his, you know, his daughter, which was which would be my future wife, I was a little bit a little bit hesitant on meeting him the first time. I actually went the first visit I, I went down to visit my girlfriend's house at the time, which was you know my my wife's house, and I remember the first time I got there. You know, it was late. You know, I spent a night. I think I spent a night on the couch. I'm not sure. Maybe on the couch. And anyway, the next morning, the first thing in the morning, he wanted me to go with him to get some wood for the uh, wire fireplace because it was cold that that morning. And I was a little bit hesitant because I didn't know what to expect. Didn't know how you know he would treat me, but just treated me very nicely, kind. Kindest guy. I mean, I was a little bit hesitant, but after I got in that truck with him, I knew right away that perfect man, perfect father-in-law, you know, that we had things in common. I think he kind of knew that I was really into his daughter, that I really wanted to pursue that relationship and actually marry her, so... And I even told him I was serious. So we had our talks and and the rest is history. But one of the nicest men, men you can ever come across, he would make anybody feel welcome. I mean, just friendly to everybody. Uh, even my, even my first time when I was hesitant to meet him, I was a little bit, a little bit scared. I, even though he's, you know, he's a small, he was a shorter guy than me, but just, you know, just that father figure, you know, not knowing what to expect, especially when you're dating a daughter of his, you know, he just made me feel welcome and just brought me in the family, made me feel like one of his sons, and I'm forever grateful for that. And anyway, I just enjoyed my time with him, just listening to his stories and just enjoying 
you know, our love for football, same sport teams, same uh, simple Southern life. And I do love boiled peanuts, so that's one thing we had in common. <laughs> but anyway, guys, let me let me let me do that. That first pass was excellent, so let me come back with a second pass. Let me wash my face, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, first pass was excellent. Let me do that for second pass. A second face leather here. Yeah, definitely, definitely brings that memory to the, with this scent. And I, I knew he had different colognes growing up. I mean, you know, from me spending my years with him, but Polo Green was the only one that I remember. That that was probably the most common one that he wore. So. And I'm very grateful for my mother-in-law giving me this setback. Let me do this for the shave. Because this is a very sentimental shave. What's interesting is, at the time, when, 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 my, when my wife, we actually worked in a grocery store. I was a uh, produce manager at a store called Win Dixie, and my wife worked there. And come to find out, after I met my father-in-law, he was actually a store manager at Win Dixie at one time. So he was a store manager there. He was just another store manager at a different uh, grocery store, and he was a. He also was a, a you know a bread delivery man and just a hardworking guy. But that Win Dixie connection was pretty pretty sweet, pretty cool that we that we. That's another thing we had in common was, you know, I was in the, in the grocery store fold, so. So I think he knew I was a hardworking guy, so. Maybe saw a little bit of himself in me, hopefully. But. He, Super, super amazing man. Definitely a family man, hardworking man, always took care of his family. Uh, he was one of the men that, one of the, was just a good role model, basically, for my family. I just remember him just giving, sacrificing for his family at the time. I mean, he had... You know, I had like, uh, man, I had four kids living in the same house. But definitely gave himself to his family, was a very hardworking family man. God-fearing man and believed in Christ, was a Christian. Uh, religion was very important to him and his family. Definitely wanted his kids to be uh, saved. Uh, love God, which, and also wanted his uh, kids to be taken care of, you know. Uh, his daughters, whoever they married, you know, had the same ideal deals as him, so. I just wanted him to know that I would always take care of his daughter, my wife, and I think he was happy about that. And just being, just studying him, just being with him, growing up with him, you know, he made me want to be a better man also. I don't know if I'll ever live up live up to what he, his legacy, but, but I hope I do come close to that, to how great a man he was. But speaking about the Bucks, he's got the best seat in the house tonight. He'll be sitting up, sitting up there in heaven, watching down, watching his hometown Bucks. Hopefully beat the uh, Kansas City Chiefs tonight.
and I'm hoping that <laughs> he can kind of help me with that. Maybe give, <laughs> maybe do a favor for me. Hopefully, <laughs> help it make it happen. But we'll see. Anyway, guys, second pass was was excellent. Got a little nick right here, but I think I was just not really paying attention. But man, the shave, <laughs> the shave is is just just a moving shave for me. But anyway, guys, let me rinse my face. I'll be back for the. Uh, probably a touch-up pass. I know I feel pretty Pretty close right now with my shave, so I'll probably do a against the grain on my cheeks here But let me rest my face guys. I'll be right back All right guys back to my final pass my final touch-up pass or you can say the money pass. So let's do that right against the grain here And one of the things about Paul was one of the things he loved to get was like these outrageous shirts. Um, either family would buy them, my family would buy them, my wife would buy these funny shirts. And I remember like, I remember one particular shirt that she bought him was actually a, a Fred Flintstone shirt. You know, with the with the actual, it looked like a Fred, it looked like the kind that Fred, Flint, Fred Flintstone would used to wear on the show in his cartoon. And. She pretty much set set him, set that up for embarrassment because he would wear that thing everywhere from what I heard. He would wear it out of the house to uh, drop her off at school, stuff like that, just, just to embarrass her. <laughs> but, I mean, you got what you, what you, what you wish for, so... But he loved uh, Southern comedy like Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, you might be a redneck, that kind of stuff. I remember he used to love those those uh, those uh, his his skits a lot of times. And it's funny because I remember he used to always uh, we used to always used to always tease him. You know, with the with that, you might be a redneck. One of the things he used to do, all which, which is funny, he used to he wore dentures in his later years, and he would always hide them. He would, you know, when he when he would take them out of his mouth and put them in in, in certain places, and forget where where he hit where he put them at. I remember one 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 time, I think it was around Thanksgiving, couldn't find anywhere. It was getting ready to eat dinner, and one of us found it between two oven mitts or oven uh, pot holders. And that was one of the things that we said. You might be a redneck if you use a pot holder, two pot holders, as also a denture holder. So that was a pretty funny thing I remember from Thanksgiving. Or I think it was one of those kind of dinners from when he did that. But he also had a bird feeder. He had like two or three bird feeders up in North Carolina at his, uh, his cabin up there. And he was always concerned about squirrels getting all the food, so he would, he would like tr s brainstorm ways to keep them getting onto the food. And I remember one of those things, one of those times he spent, man, I think we spent a few hours trying to figure out how to keep, keep the squirrels away from the food. He just had a rope between the tree and and the, the post of the uh, of the um, outside porch and he took him about at least an I think I want to say it took him a long time to position that bird feeder right in the middle so the the squirrels wouldn't get to it but that's one of the things he used to do he was just funny about that he did funny things that I, I remember funny memories and I remember my, our memories about we had when we went we went fishing a couple times uh talked life and I just love the stories he had you know that he that he said that he did when he grew up. He actually grew up in Florida, so he was actually a native Floridian. He grew up in Bradenton, Florida, and he was born in 1938, November 1st. So, so he lived to be 82 years of 82 great years of life here in Florida on this earth, and he touched a lot of people. Definitely touched me. Touched his kids, his family, touched everybody that he, that he uh, came in contact with. 
And like I said, God-fearing man, Christian man, uh, small-town Southern man. But anyway, guys, that's my shave. Let me go ahead and rinse my face. Uh, before I do that, let's take another toast to Paul. Hoping that the Bucks will win tonight. Let me rinse my face, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back for the post shave, and that was a fantastic shave. The uh, Gem Micromatic, always a great shaver. I just didn't, I just don't pick it up uh, often enough, but definitely a nice razor. De definitely a nice vintage razor for a very nice BBS shave. But anyway, guys, post shave I'll be using is the Sterling Green aftershave, and it's got a little bit of use, a little bit of use from it. My father-in-law used a little bit of it, so I think he mostly wasn't an aftershaver user, I think he mostly used, uh, just mainly just used the shaving soap, and and I, I did I did remember he had a, a bottle of Polo Green aftershave in his shave then, so he maybe used that instead of this, which, which would probably explain it, so let's put this on the face, and yeah, definitely smells, smells like him a lot. <laughs> Definitely smells nice. Nice polo, green scent if you like this kind of thing. I would highly recommend it. And soap strength is probably about, a, a, I would say about a nine. I mean, it smells just like polo green in this whole bathroom. And this is probably about a nine too. This is pretty pretty close to probably what the aftershave smells like from Ralph Lauren, but great scent. Man, definitely bring back memories. So guys, my recap for my shave, my tribute shave to Paul, and also my Super Bowl Sunday shave, I used my Gem Micromatic Club Proof Razor. So these were made about between 1934 and 1947, so definitely a vintage razor, a great shaver. One of the razors, one of the only razors I ever used um, that I enjoy, that single edge, and I picked this up with my father-in-law in one of the antique shops up in North Carolina, and so it has a Definitely a sentimental meaning to me, so great, great razor, and I will always remember that day. That was a special day. And the soap I used was Sterling Green, which was by, which is his his soap. I actually borrowed this soap from my mother-in-law. She she graciously let me use it for the shave. And this is a scent that he would that he enjoyed, Sterling Green, which was actually Polo Green by Ralph Lauren. And I used that in the after shave, which I just you put on my face, and. The brush is a brush that I don't make anymore, but this is one of the brushes that he had in his shave then. I want to say his only brush, and he really enjoyed using this brush, and I can see why. I really enjoyed using the brush for this shave, and sadly, they don't make this brush anymore by L. Aquitaine, but definitely a great brush. You don't see these very often, so these are still around. People are still using these, some of the wet shavers, old wet shavers from the last few years, so they are definitely around, and Definitely a, a brush that my father-in-law enjoyed using. So guys, that's the shave. Hope you guys have a good week. Hope you guys enjoy Super Bowl night. Hopefully the Bucks will win. And also, guys, just remember to also live life to the fullest. Love your family. And just treat everybody with kindness and respect. And that's one of, that's one of, that's one of the things that my father-in-law did every day that he lived on this earth. And I would always take that with take that with me and, and try to live life like he did, hopefully. Hopefully I can follow that and make him proud. But anyway, guys, seize the day. Take care. You guys stay safe. Have a great week. See you later.